So narcissistic people, especially covert narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths, they will use the information that they know about you that are things that have hurt you, your traumas, your vulnerabilities, the things in your life that you fear, the things in your life you are protecting yourself from. They will use those things to coerce you into relationships with them. Narcissistic people are looking for the information that gets them into your head the quickest. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and transform your life after toxic relationships and being with narcissistic people. So you guys, have you looked back on your relationships with narcissistic people, even if it's your parents? So, cause you know how relationships are one thing when you're little, but as you're older, the parent might start using information against you. Have you looked at your relationships in hindsight and have you seen where that toxic person has been using anything that you have shared with them anything that they have witnessed in you or that someone else has told them about your vulnerabilities your fears and your past traumas to coerce you into being in relationships or into being hoovered by them so here's what a narcissist does when they're coercing you the information that they have. They will say they find out that you have an abandonment issue because of something that happened in your childhood. What they will do is very early on convince you that they're a person that would never abandon anyone. They will tell you stories about animals they've rescued. They will tell you stories about how they've had friendships forever or how they're very loyal. They will talk about how people have left them and they understand and they would never do that to another human being. And uh, you know, they'll relate to your trauma. All right. And they'll relate to your trauma and then they'll start sending you messages that reinforce how they are there to protect you from that trauma ever happening again. Have you experienced this or something similar? Let me know in the comments. This is sneaky. This is underhanded and it is trickery, okay? They have no intention of having a healthy relationship with you. They're just trying to find a way to relate quickly and to get you to believe that they are safe. A narcissistic person needs you to need them. They need to be the center of your world so that you orbit around them and support the delusion of who they want to believe that they are, okay? They are not being a good person. They're pretending to be a good person so that you reflecting back to them what an amazing person they are for supporting you through this feelings of, of everything you've experienced in your past, right? They take the supply from your reflection of that. But the thing is, they will then use it to create a devaluing structure in the relationship. They will, if, if you have the abandonment fear, they'll disappear. They'll stop telling you where they're going. They will triangulate other people into the relationship. They'll do things to create the fear of abandonment in you later on. All right. I mean, if you have traumas in your past and you have vulnerabilities that you're aware of and things that you would like to work on that you can see, or if you don't know what it is that the narcissist is using to keep you hooked, that is a place that you might want to seek someone to talk to about this because that is important that you understand what it is for yourself so that you're not letting toxic people into your life. Okay. Really important to understand yourself and to begin to work on healing some of the traumas and the beliefs that you have about yourself because of those traumas or beliefs you have about life because of those things that have happened to you so that you're sort of narcissist proof. Do you know what I mean? So that if they come in and they do this, you see it. And if you don't see it, you catch it when they start the devaluing. And then you have the fortitude and you have the ability to create the boundaries to keep them out. And here's a question for you. Have you hit the thumbs up yet and the subscribe? If not, go do so. Anyway, let's keep going. I mean, this is one thing when you're meeting new people and you're getting back out there again, if whether it's dating, friendships, 
groups of people, whatever it is, the, the feelings of wanting to share who you are too fast and to share the things you've experienced too intimately, too closely with people you do not know, this can be for survivors of narcissists. This can be an area of your life to sort of shore up. This can be an area to see that it is not safe or wise to share too much too soon because you don't know who that person is on the receiving end. I'm not saying we need to be guarded and like, you know, defensive against everyone we meet, but knowing when you're oversharing, a lot of people who have survived toxic relationships overshare. I cannot tell you how many people I meet in life who don't even know what I do, right, for work or for, or, you know, that I have this channel, who will immediately share when they've been in a toxic relationship. Over and over, I have met people who say this, and if I were an unsafe person, that would be gold, right? If they do that to an unsafe person, then that's just handing over the reins to, you know, creating this, the love bombing. Sometimes love bombing isn't love bombing, it's relating. It's the, per, the narcissistic person catching these little bits of information or big bits of information when people overshare and running with it. That can be love bombing, okay? Because it creates connection. Anything that creates a bond fast is love bombing, all right? So keep yourself safe from that. Learn when it's appropriate to share, how much to share, and how to, how to watch for red flags. Go watch some of the videos on red flags. Start to understand what it is that's going on and how narcissistic people get in, how they groom you, how they get into your life in the first place so that when you see it, even if it's months down the line, you can say, ah, there it is. Okay, goodbye right? You can learn to set the boundaries to get away. You guys take care and I will see you next time. Don't forget the thumbs up and subscribe. Bye.